Welcome to the PThread Programming on Rails 6 webinar. My name is George Hacker and I'm a Curriculum Manager at Red Hat and I'll be your presenter. In this five video series, we'll be introducing you to PThread Programming on RHEL. In part one, we'll introduce you to PThread Programming in general. Specifically, we'll show you what threads are and we'll show you what their primary applications are. Also, we'll show you what RHEL 6 enhancements there are that benefit thread programs in general. In part two, we'll show you how to get started with pthread programs in RHEL. In part three, we'll look at the functions that you use to wait for threads to finish and how to terminate threads. In part four, we'll look at how to protect critical sections of code with mutexes. And finally, in part five, we'll look at how to synchronize with read-write locks. So let's get started. First, what are threads? What is threaded programming? You can think of a threaded program as a single program that has multiple functions or paths of execution that are running in parallel. You can think of threads as being lightweight processes. In fact, the Linux kernel treats threads and processes in a similar manner, but threads aren't as expensive to create. They all share the same memory resources uh, within a given program. All the threads share a memory area, so they share executable code. They can access all the functions among themselves. They can also share the data area, which means all global variables are accessible by all threads. And they also share the heap, which means that any memory areas or dynamic structures that are allocated can be shared among all the different threads. They share file descriptors, so when a thread does I.O., it updates the file descriptor that the other threads use. Also, too, they share the signal mask that allows for inter-process communication using the signal system call. One other thing that they share is their environment. So their root and working directories and uh, the privileges that they run as are all shared. So any system calls that are made that change those affect all the threads equally. One thing that they have distinct from each other is that each thread has its own stack and pending signals. By having their own stack, this means that each thread can call other functions and the registers and local variables are stored on the stack. And one thread's execution does not affect the execution of other threads in that way, so that they can do sensible things in terms of calling functions and subroutines. So essentially a threaded program is a single process that has multiple functions that execute in parallel within the given system. So the question is, is what applications are suited to threaded programming? The first thing that's required is that programs should have a parallel design, and this can occur in a couple different ways. First, you may have a program that can do multiple CPU-bound tasks in parallel or concurrently. If you have an application that can do parallel computations and you want to utilize multiple processors in parallel, this is a great application to do multi-threaded programming with. Another type of program is a program that does CPU-bound processing, but also has an I.O. Uh, element to it. Rather than having a single program that does computation and then I.O. has to wait for the I.O. to complete before it continues to do more computation, what you can do is write that program as a multi-threaded app. So it would allow the program to do a computation while another thread is waiting for an I.O. request to complete. Typically, threaded applications are used when you need better performance. Unlike the fork system call where memory is copied on demand as the separate processes start modifying data structures, with threaded applications, all their memory areas except for the stacks are shared. So that saves the overhead of copying memory whenever changes are made. This also provides for less overhead for synchronization. Since they share a common memory area, they can use data structures that allow them to synchronize with one another and not have to use expensive system calls, such as System 5 IPC shared memory or semaphore arrays or message queues, or even using sockets. Some of the enhancements that RHEL 6 has made to threaded programming is that there are some changes that occurred in four different areas. One is in the glibc uh, C library function support for threads. Also, the GDB debugger has been improved to uh, debug threaded programs. The GCC compiler has been modified to allow for parallel program development, and also the kernel. Let's talk about what each of these changes are. 
First, you have the glibc thread-related updates in the library. One thing that was changed is the way that malloc works. Whenever you have a system that has multiple CPUs and malloc is called, it allocates memory from different memory pools so that each processor uses memory that's local to that processor. And also, that improves in performance. Another thing that has been changed is that the libraries have been modified to improve the efficiency of the way that condition variables are used with priority inheritance. Also, mutex operations have been improved as well. GDB has been modified to allow the debugger to trace and follow different threads and allows control of the programmer to step through a particular thread and debug that thread. There are some changes to the user interface in GDB to allow for easier debugging of threaded programs. GCC has been uh, updated to support the OpenMP 3.0 features, which allows for extensions to the C language that allows for parallelism. Additionally, the C++ libraries have been updated and provided support that parallel execution as well. And then finally, the kernel has been modified. The kernel in RHEL 6 uses the tickless kernel that employs on-demand interrupts. In other words, when timed events occur, they schedule an interrupt to occur when the time event is done, rather than having a tick occur according to a fixed clock, which causes a lot of context switching. Also, too, the completely fair scheduler is used, which uses a scheduling algorithm that uses a red-black tree, rather than using an order one task queues in the, the previous kernel. So all of these changes continue to be done and development continues to occur, to help improve the performance of multi-threaded enhancements. So, in part one, we introduced you to p-thread programming by looking at what threads are and what their applications are. In part two, we'll look at how to get started with p-thread programs, how to build threaded programs, and how to write code that uses threads. So, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in part two.